So there's a lot of health issues that can come about when your electrolyte levels are off. And those electrolytes could be high or they could be low and there's trouble that can come about in either direction. So in this video, I'm going to show you some simple tests that you can run at home to get an idea of where your electrolytes are. This is going to be fun. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So when we want to get an idea of where somebody's electrolytes are, we like to look at their blood pressure. And keep in mind that this is not a diagnostic thing. We're not doing anything like the medical world would not view this as where their electrolytes are. But someone who likes to look at the terrain of the body or physiology and get an idea of how that body might be operating and steps they could take to maybe improve the way that body is operating, then I'll kind of walk you through what we look at when we're looking at blood pressure. Because blood pressure, when somebody takes it, they should really take it at least two hours after a meal and they should be calm and relaxed and it shouldn't be fast at first thing in the morning. It should be after a meal, but you want it to be at least two hours after a meal so the body's not crazy all busy doing all this digestive stuff. So the person should just relax and take their blood pressure and then that number can give us some indication of things that we're looking at within the body. So when we're looking at blood pressure, that can give us insights into the level of minerals and blood sugar and even protein a little bit and filth and toxins that might be in the blood. So more things that are in there thickening up the blood is creating more pressure needed to push that blood through the system. It would be harder to push pancake syrup through the system than it would be red wine. So the thicker the blood is, the more pressure is needed to push it through. So these are the things that can thicken that up. So when we're looking at somebody's blood pressure, we want to look at it and when we see a systolic number, which is that top number on an automatic blood pressure cuff, when that's below 112, we view that as what we call electrolyte deficient. And we view that as a signal that maybe there's not enough minerals or electrolytes in the system. And if we see a systolic number that is greater than 130, then that can be an indication that maybe there's too many minerals in the system. Maybe the body's having a hard time excreting these minerals and other stuff and so it's lifting that blood pressure. And when someone's blood pressure is really low or if minerals or electrolytes are very low, they could be dealing with issues like vertigo or dizzy spells or maybe insane cravings like where they don't even know what happened. They just blacked out and find themselves knee deep in a bag of donuts or maybe insomnia or anxiety or cravings and either menstrual cramps or even like Charlie horse type cramps and other cramps like that. Now, none of these things are diagnostic. None of these things mean that a person has low electrolytes and if a person has low electrolytes, that doesn't mean they're going to be dealing with those issues. These are just things that we see common when we see low electrolyte levels. But all of these issues, have other possible causes as well. So none of these things are diagnostic or any type of confirmation. We just like to look at different factors to get an idea of how the body is operating. Now, I'm not gonna dig into any of these topics right here today. If you wanna know more about these topics, we have videos on all these things. You can just go to our video page and just put in the search box whatever you want to find and we go over all these things as well as these digestive symptoms we're going to talk about too. I'm just not going to explain each and every one because we'll be here for 14 and a half hours. Now if someone has high blood pressure then we see issues like you know high blood pressure and all the horrible bad things that can go along with that. The trick is when we're looking at this blood pressure, that's really not the whole picture. That doesn't tell us everything because it doesn't tell us what is low or what is high. It doesn't tell us how many minerals or how much blood sugar and that stuff. So we have to look at other factors to get an idea of what we're really looking at. So if we looked at a blood pressure that was, you know, 120 over 80, and we're like, oh, that's great. That's a good number. That's in a good range, so they must have enough minerals. But then we look at their fasting blood sugar and it's 215, well, then we know that a lot that is thickening up that blood is probably the blood sugar. So then we say, well, if the blood pressure is in the right range, but blood sugar is very high, then maybe minerals are not as high as they first looked like they might have been when we just looked at the blood pressure. 
So when we're looking at this blood pressure that we can look at with a blood pressure cuff we pick up at a pharmacy for $30 or $40 and we can just do this at home. So when we're looking at this, we want to look at other considerations to get an idea of what that blood pressure number is really telling us. So we want to look at digestive function because that can give us indications of what may be going on. We want to see is a person burping or bloating? Do they have acid reflux? Are they constipated or do they have diarrhea? Maybe they're dealing with nausea or indigestion or maybe even skin or acne issues. So all of these things here are signs that the digestive process is not functioning correctly. So if somebody can't really break down their food correctly, they can't pull all the minerals out of that food. So then if we're having these issues going on and this blood pressure is low, then it's like, oh wow, that bed minerals really are low since the person's having a hard time breaking down their food and their blood pressure is really low. And on the other side, if we see high blood pressure, then we can look at this digestive function and feel like, hey, maybe they're not detoxifying correctly if they're also dealing with some of these digestive symptoms. Because in the body, this liver thing makes, uh, takes all these filters and toxins out of the body and it kind of filters that junk out and then it puts it in this bile in the gallbladder and then this bile, this bile kind of travels down, helps us digest our food and then goes through the intestinal tract and it goes out the back door when we poop like a champion. But it's really common for someone's bile to become too thick and sticky to flow correctly, and when it's not flowing, it can restrict the digestive capacity and also create a lot of those symptoms that we were talking about with these digestive symptoms. So if someone's not detoxing correctly, then a lot of those filth and toxins will stay in the blood, thicken up the blood, and raise that blood pressure. So that's just another indication that we can look at to get an idea of what this number is telling us. We also want to look at water intake. How much water is a person drinking? If you're like, hey, how much water are you drinking? And he's like, well, I can remember drinking water when Clinton got in trouble with that intern. And, you know, that's a while ago. You're probably not drinking enough water. And that's very common for people not to really drink water. Like I had some coffee. I think that's got water in it. We really need to drink water to get this junk out of the system. But if somebody's like, oh, they said to drink a gallon of water a day, and this person already has low mineral levels and they're drinking all that water, they're going to be washing all the minerals out of the system and that's going to probably lead to that low blood pressure. So this can kind of give us some signs of what might be going on. We want to look at somebody's blood sugar and we want to look at their fasting blood sugar. And you can do that with a glucometer you can pick up at a pharmacy. And if you look at that first thing in the morning right when you wake up and it's 95 or lower then high blood sugar is probably not thickening up the blood. But if it's over 100, then that's a sign that you may be leaning a little bit towards that insulin resistant side and maybe blood sugar is accumulating a little bit in the bloodstream and thickening up that blood and raising that blood pressure. So again, none of this is diagnostic. This is just nice for some people to be able to look at their blood pressure and get some indications of what's going on. And a lot of people will be able to just look at their blood pressure and if they're having signs of low electrolytes and they look at their blood pressure and it's like 98 over 60, well, that's a pretty good sign that mineral levels and electrolyte levels are probably pretty low. But it's just important to understand these other considerations that can go into making up that blood pressure so you're kind of looking at the whole picture. We really want to look at the whole picture when we're trying to figure out how a body is operating. So I'm not going to go into how to improve either of these issues here. We've made other videos about that. But if you see that your blood pressure is really low and you're showing signs of low mineral levels and you're thinking, oh man, I really got an electrolyte problem there, then jump over right now and watch our video on how to lift mineral levels. And if you see your blood pressure is high, jump over and watch our video on understanding high blood pressure so you can get insights on how to improve either one of those issues. Let us know how it goes.